All right. So, AY nineteen twenty. This was the discussion done. Next discussion, house property. All right. What is the charging section of house property? Come on, come on. Tell me charging section of house property section twenty two. Section twenty two has two parts. Come on, tell me two parts. Come on, come on. Tell me two parts. Section twenty two main main condition. Come on, tell me charging section. Are main two sex main two condition of the chapter. There has to be house property and assessee should be. Owner of house property and that house property should not be used for own business and that is the additional condition just to clarify the heads. All right, but these two heads, those these two condition are flagship condi conditions. There has to be house property and SSC should be owner of house property. What is the definition of house property that we have written? House property does not mean only building. No, 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 no. House property, building and land appurtenant there too. Building and land appurtenant there too. All right, and. Then the what is what is the meaning of owner? Owner doesn't mean only legal owner. Owner also includes beneficial owner and deemed owner. Majority times to evade taxes, SSC will try to show someone else on the paper as the owner. Legal owner will be different and real owner will be different. We have discussed those cases. All right, wife will become legal owner and husband will remain remain real owner. All right, in that cases, department will take rent from wife's income and it will be clubbed in the hands of husband income. Yes or no? Yeah. All right. And therefore, to to have a house property, you need not to be a real owner of legal owner of the property. You must be the real owner of the property. All right. So those things we have discussed under section twenty two and twenty seven. Those two sections are done. After that, before we move ahead, all right. I wanted to discuss one thing, and we have discussed this thing in detail in last lecture. All right. Here, rent is not taxable in this chapter. Rent is not taxable. Rent alone is not. taxable what is taxable actually here we are taxing rent earning annual capacity rent earning annual, annual capacity. capacity so your let out period may be 3 months hello you are showing government of india let out period only 3 months but still we will take tax on 12 month because we want annual capacity our values is net annual value a taxable value in this chapter is net annual value gross Annual value. The word is annual. You understand. So, if your property become taxable, whole annual value will become taxable. Your actual period of let out is not important. And to understand that thing in more detail, we need to prepare this table. Sir, what is this table? This table talks about types of house property in our chapter. All right. There are actually four types of property, but out of four, only three properties are taxable under this head. One property will go to its own head, and that is PGBP. Hello. If property is let out, then that property will be known, known as LOP property. I will always call that property as the LOP. LOP means taxable property. Why is it taxable? Can you guess? Because it is earning rent. Yes or no? All right, sir. When property becomes let out, please understand this example, and you you also need to write down this example here. All right. When you create this chart, so this is the timeline. This is your previous year. Can you tell me what is your previous year? Previous year, eighteen, nineteen. All right. First nine month, please understand. Property was SOP, and after three month, property became LOP. LOP. So what should I call this property? L because I can't see there are different laws for SOP and different laws for LOP. LOP. SOP is different. Self occupied property different in law and let out property different in law. You tell me what should I call to this particular property by reading the definition of LOP. Can you say partly SOP, partly LOP? Answer is no. You have to give one answer. Either it is SOP or it is LOP. Some people say, sir, majority year, majority month in the or major period in the year, it was SOP. So let us assume it as a SOP. No, you can't. You cannot. It has to be called as. Come on, tell me. LOP. Why? Because what is this word? This word say if you let out for. Any period, any period, even if it is for SOP for 11 month, 29 days, and let out only for two days in a year, still you have to pay tax on full year interest, full year rent. Yes. Hello, yes. you understand why? Because the property has become let out property. Property has become let out property. I call this property as a single status property. This property has. Single status. All right. In future, I will be teaching you property with dual status. Hello. In future, I will be teaching you property with dual status, where property will be like this. Hello. Ground floor and first floor, and ground floor will be LOP, and first floor will be 
SOP. This is partly let out and partly SOP. This property is called as partly LOP, partly SOP because this property have dual status. Dual status. But that will come in future. Right now you need to focus on the single status property. This property is a single status. And single status and which single status? SOP or LOP? LOP because to be called particular property as a SOP you need to occupy it throughout the year. Hello and in as what is happening with the property in assessment it is not important. What is happening with the property in previous year that is more important. Yeah. What happened till yesterday is more important. What will happen from today is not important. Today we are just starting assessment for previous year 18, 19 and previous year has ended yesterday night. Hello, and therefore you need to understand self-occupied property. Self-occupied property means property which was self-occupied throughout the previous year. Now there can be two purposes to occupy the property: self-occupied for business and self-occupied for residence. So when you become chartered accountant, you will have one house property and one office. One house property where you stay and one office where you run your office. You understand? Your business, your profession. Yes or no? Yeah. All right. Now you are having two properties. One property is exempt in the law because one house, every associate is out. But the other house, sir, will it become taxable under house property? Answer is no because charging section has three conditions. There should be house property, associate should be owner of. So first two conditions are complied. Third condition is that such house property should not be used for own business or profession and if it is used for own business and profession income which is derived from that property or by using that property will be taxed but not under house property it will be taxed under the head PGBP that is the appropriate head of taxation of business properties hello yeah, yeah? and therefore you can see SOP for B SOP SOP for business is excluded I can't say exempted I can't say deducted it is excluded is a different word in law excluded from charging section and therefore not taxable under I did not say not taxable I said not taxable under IFHP it may become taxable under PGBP or IFOS but it will not become taxable under IFHP for sure am I clear yeah can I go ahead sir then what property will become taxable here SOPR what will become taxable here SOPR Every assessee, every assessee deserves one house property at least, yes or no? Yeah. That guy was talking about two house property, that will happen in next year, not in this year, okay? Every assessee will deserve, hello, every assessee deserve. I did not say every person deserve one house, so there are four members in the family, husband, wife and two children. Husband is in 101, wife in 102, first child in 103 and other child is in 104. No, you don't see for families like that. Because there are four person, but only one assessee. Hello. I don't even say one family deserves one house. I said one assessee deserves one house. Minimum. Yes or no? Uh, assessee is the paying taxes. That means assessee is earning income. That means assessee must possess, must have at least basic necessities. And if government of India is unable to provide those basic necessity, then it's not a only failure of government of India or SAC, both are equally responsible. Yes. All right. If SAC is in our country, is unable to eat food, who is responsible for it? SAC means taxpayer. See, if you don't eat food, you're, nobody is concerned about you. Because you are nobody in the nation as of now. Yes. SAC means a taxpayer. If taxpayer is sleeping hungry tonight, who is responsible? Come on, tell me. Government is responsible and therefore government have created ration system. Hello. Yes. All right. Where food is available at very cheap price, 2 rupees per, per kg rice. At least that much he can buy and have. Yes or no? Yes. If my SAC is dying out of dengue or malaria or normal, any disease. All right. Not only SAC but government is also equally responsible because government did not provide him basic necessity of health care. And therefore government has created, already created government hospital. If children of SAC are not educated or SAC is not educated, it's not only failure of SAC, it is also failure of government. Therefore, government have created education system where SAC can get at least basic necessity education at free of cost. Transportation is another necessity. Government have created railway and bus system where by paying just 5 to 10 rupees you can travel from one destination to 
and if you don't have money then you can travel without ticket no problem you just have to run whenever you ctc yeah. all right but at least transport mechanism is there yes or no yes. all right cloth please cloth assc can manage at his own government is not asking assc to have branded cloth basic cloth should be there hello basic cloth cloth starts from 100 to 200 rupees that much you please manage now the the biggest basic necessity is the shelter yes or no yeah. the biggest costliest and most difficult necessity to be managed is shelter government has already started lot of schemes lot of scheme in gst also you will be reading those schemes all right pradhan mantri awas yojana pradhan mantri ghar kul yojana pradhan mantri guru kul yojana guru adesh uh, bd ghar kul yojana all right pradhan mantri affordable housing schemes pradhan mantri this slum redevelopment schemes lot of scheme government of india already has started that subsidy if you see on you see any real estate advertisement in train and buses now in mumbai they say pradhan mantri that housing yojana will give you subsidy of 2.25 lakh All right. So there, Mahada is there. What Mahada is trying to do? Our Mahada is there, no? Government authority. What they are trying to do? They are trying to construct affordable houses in Mumbai. Yes or no? Yes. Their quality is cheap, but it's okay. But at, at least SSC will have shelter over his head. Government have target that every SSC deserves a house, and government is forcing SSC. Literally, they are forcing SSC to buy a house property. because house property is a necessity that one assc must have every person mm, we are not talking about 132 crore houses in india one assc buy house seven eight people five six people can accommodate that particular house hello yes. all right so government say one house property is not taxable nav of that particular property will be taken as nil i did not say positive i did not say negative i said the nav taxable value of the property is it taxable this property is taxable hello you cannot write exempted here even if i write exempted that doesn't mean exempted please understand it means nav is nil taxable property is taxable but as nil hello property taxable but nil then you will ask me sir what is the logic of taxing property at nil rate that logic i will tell you all right wait for that that logic is there in section 24 all right sir my father is having two property this we have discussed and in both property my father stays reality you know what is the reality but what is the reality one house is let out and he is taking cash you understand government is saying sir one house property you choose you select whatever house you select that will be declare as sop not taxable any other house you have any houses that you have more than one sop sir i have five houses one house is exempt balance for but sir i am not earning rent that is your problem does that house have capacity to earn rent yes yes that house has capacity to earn rent and because that house has capacity to make rent to make money whether you are earning it or not whether you are lying it or not whether you are earning in black or white we don't have time for that those four houses will be declared as let out deemed to be let out and therefore i am writing here remaining sopr will be declared as deemed to be let out property am i clear and those property despite they don't have rent they don't have rent but still they are taxable as income from house property and when you say it is taxable as income from house property sir without having rent how can property become taxable by de by determining its capacity by determining its capacity. and how do we get determine that capacity municipal value come on come on come on tell me municipal value compare with fair rent we we take whichever is higher that number we will compare with standard rent all right whichever is lower that number will give us expected rent expected rent or actual rent whichever is higher expected rent or actual rent whichever is higher will give us gross annual value this is how we determine value even if you don't have actual rent still there will be a gross value gross annual value in case of dlop your gross annual value will always be expected rent because we don't have actual rent 
we don't have in exam they are not going to tell you this property is beta laid out property this property is a self occupied property you need to see and use your brain if we have property without actual rent then what is the nature of property there is no rent mentioned in the question then what is the nature of property SOP no we don't have actual rent how can you say DLOP we don't have actual rent in the property question all right that property is SOP if you are having more than such property more than one then one house property we will declare question will not we will declare as SOP and other we have to declare as DLOP they will not give this property the DLOP beta you need to take that decision you need to have that kind of alertness where you have to take decision and declare the property the best possible solution where assessee will be liable to pay tax at minimum so in our Mumbai example is that one property is in Churchgate Fort highly costly area and one is in Virar which property you will declare as a SOP Churchgate property a property with higher value you are having one property in Dubai Burj Khalifa and one in Jogeshwari which property you will declare as a SOP obviously because that property will have higher value much more higher value than Jogeshwari property of Samajra all right and this is how it has to go you need to take that call which property has to be declared as SOP because that is a tax planning that is a tax planning it's not evasion it's a tax planning because the government did not say higher property should be SOP lower property no nothing nothing you choose assess he is given full freedom you select out of five property you have you select you select the best combination for you and declare that combination but remember balance will be taxable hello yeah please write down this chart and then we will continue with the next statement